What's up, metalheads? My name's Jamie. This is the Blades and EDC channel, and I have a really cool knife for you guys today. A knife I didn't know existed until about a week ago. Uh, before we get into that, if you enjoy this video, hit the like button. If you're new, please consider subscribe, subscribing, and uh, losing my voice, guys. And uh, thank you all so much for being here. All right, this is the Kaiser Uprising. This knife was sent in to me by my buddy Craig. Um, he's, he, we talked on the phone. He's like, hey, have you ever checked out the Kaiser Uprising? It's a discontinued model, and it's a bigger Kaiser. I was like, no, nah, I'll check it out, though. I wasn't too excited about it. Didn't think too much about it. Didn't even look it up to see what it was. Been so busy. So and when I opened it up and took it out, I was like, holy crap. Why is this discontinued? Um, this is a killer knife. And why isn't Kaiser making stuff like this today? I'm confused. I've had another Kaiser that was kind of in this category. Titanium frame lock, beautiful, S35B and also. That's the Kaiser Gunhammer, a Daryl Ralph design. This is a uh, Kim Ning design. And I don't know when these were discontinued, but MSRP was originally $250, which they probably never sold it at. They're probably under $200 would be my guess. But when they sold out of these and discontinued them, they sold these for $110, guys. That's a freaking steal for this knife. So if you got one for that price, congrats to you. All right, let me give you the specs real quick. Eight and a quarter overall length, 3.6 inch blade, S35VN blade still. They say this is a one cliff, but I'd call this more of a modified sheep's foot because it's got a little bit of belly to it. Uh, it's a plain edge. Uh, stone wash finish weight is 5.6 ounces it is a flipper only it, is, it has cage ceramic ball bearings uh, ceramic ball detent with a steel lock bar insert 3d milled pocket clip um, just a good looking knife man that's super smooth got a nice ting on the clothes ergos are fantastic even for a bigger knife you just like my, my hand fits in here perfectly before that spot right there it just feels really good in hand. Jimping isn't the best. Um, they've definitely improved their jimping over time. This thicker jimping doesn't provide much traction. The finer stuff they do, like on the PPY or the bag lighter, it, it locks you in be much better than this. But this isn't terrible. I do get some traction on it. Um, it's not terrible at all. It's just not as good as what they're doing now. Same goes for the detent. Detent's good on this, but it's not like that PPY or the mini bag light are good where it's unfellable. I could fell this knife for sure. If I tried hard enough, I'm sure. Yeah, see, I can fell it. So it's not a stiff detent like on a lot of their newer knives, but it's not a bad detent either. You give it any effort whatsoever, that blade's coming out. You can push button it or light switch it. And the push button's actually quite comfortable. Actually, I think I prefer the push button on this one over the light switch actually. Yeah, for sure. I even It even comes out quicker with the push button than it does with the light switch. So, yeah, definitely a push button for sure on this one. It does have a lanyard hole, which I give or take. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not a big fan of them. I'm not going to put a lanyard on it. But if you like lanyards, it has it there for you. Um, plenty of clearance from the blade, too. The blade will not hit it, so you won't have to worry about that. Um, just a really cool knife. All right, let me give you some size comparisons real quick. Uh, here's the Benchmade Griptilian. It's going to be in that category of size. So it's a bigger knife. Here's the uh, EMP EDC Nimble X. Again, actually, it's got a bit of length on the Nimble X. Not too much, maybe a quarter of an inch. Um, here's the Spyderco Shaman. right there in the same almost identical in length to a shaman and thickness to overall size shaman's a very good comparison to it here's the ad 20.5 quite a bit bigger than ad 20.5 here's the uh spyderco yojimbo 2 see that's a warncliffe blade this is more of a sheep's foot blade i'm not sure why they call it a warncliffe uh, here's a Benchmade bug out. Here's the this variant PE2. And we'll go ahead and do a penguin and that should give you a good idea on the size of this knife. It's a bigger one for sure. I generally not a big fan of larger knives. Um, I have a medium sized hand so uh, you know 
even the shaman. The shaman's about the most I would carry, and I would carry the hell out of a shaman, don't get me wrong, but that's as big as I would go. This is right there with it. I could carry this knife for sure. Um, the ergos are freaking amazing. They're fantastic. You couldn't ask for better than ergo, ergos than this. One thing would be better if you did a flipper delete, has some thumb studs, and had a finger choil there where you could choke up where just the flipper was gone. But that's not how this knife was made. So judge it as it is. Ergos are fantastic. They're really good, actually. There's not a hot spot on this knife. They chamfered down all the edges, made everything soft to the touch. Uh, even the lock bar inserts chamfer down and they gave or the lock bars chamfer or the show sites cut down so you can get to the lock bar and it's chamfered down and buttery smooth buttery smooth great lockup great sound on the lockup too can y'all hear that that click click sounds good and on the clothes gets a ting on the clothes Yeah, great sounds, great ergos. I'm not going to say great action because the detent, you know, after handling something like this from Kaiser with this detent, uh, they've definitely improved their detent over time. Could you imagine if they brought this back and had a detent like that in this knife? Oh, bring it back, Kaiser, with that, and then go ahead and do a flipper delete and put some thumb studs on this thing. You will sell many, many, many of them, I guarantee you. And this pocket clip, guys. Let's talk about this pocket clip because this is a premium pocket clip from Kaiser now. It's basically a folded over, kind of milled titanium clip, kind of folded over. I'd call it a hybrid clip. It's it's okay. It works fine. Nothing wrong with it. Actually, it's the same one I've got on the Vist variant here. It's okay. It works fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But look at what they give you here, man. Look at this thing. Beautiful. Beautiful shapes to it. Uh, makes me wonder if it'll fit a Spyderco, actually. It looks like a Spyderco, Spyderco uh, hole pattern. Very similar. Curious. But, yeah, great knife. Wish they would make more of these for sure. This must have been out before I got into knife collecting for some time. Something I missed out on for sure. Comment below, what other Kaisers from this era are there out there I should check out? Because, um, yeah, this is, a, this is a different level of Kaiser. I mean, if Kaiser were to come out with something like this today, this would be, this would shock me, actually. You don't see much like this from Kaiser now. I mean, you get the uh, some bigger knives from Kaiser, but titanium frame locks like this, there's not that many that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, I mean, the Towser K is a bigger knife. Um, the Sheepdog's a bigger knife. Actually, speaking of the Sheepdog, um, which has... An excellent detent, right? This is an excellent detent. This is a good good detent. This is fantastic. This is good. But, man, they just don't do this kind of stuff anymore. Not very often, anyway. And, uh, yeah, makes me... Uh, you see their potential with something like this, and it makes you want to see what they can do now that they've improved things, detents and stuff to this level, what they could do with this knife now. Be it, It'd be uh, really cool to see that. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, and I will see you guys on the next one.